Hi, this next part of the tutorial is how to use OpenOffice Writer, and it's just an introduction to the Writer program. We'll start the Writer by double-clicking Writer on the desktop. Uh, this program is called OpenOffice.org Writer. You can go to the OpenOffice.org website and download OpenOffice for your computer at home, or the students can download it if they want it on their computer at home. It makes it so that everyone has equal opportunity to do word processing. You can do PowerPoint files and you can do databases. Uh, and it also eliminates the need to go to Costco every two years to buy the latest Microsoft product. So this is just an introduction to the writer program. Uh, what we'll look at first is the bottom toolbar here is used for fonts. It's similar in any word processing program. You've got different font types, font size, bold, italic, underline, uh, the justification, bullet lists. And that changes how your fonts are typed in. You see we've got the bl blinking cursor here. Now, this toolbar will change when we use different objects in the program, and we'll see that in a moment. So I'll show you one difference between this program and Word is if we click on Gallery here, Word would call this clip art. This program calls it Gallery. And what clip art is is a collection of pictures that you can include in your document. The categories are down the side here and the pictures within the category are here. So I'll just scroll down a bit in the animals category and we get a list of pictures to choose from. Scroll back up. I'll click on the education category and here's some education pictures we could choose from. And there's lots of categories and lots of pictures in each category. To bring an image into the document you click and hold on it and bring it down and let go in the document. And you see it's now down there. Now this gallery is taking up half the screen so to turn it off I click on the gallery button and now it's back to um, just having your writer document in front of you. Now we were just talking about this toolbar here for fonts and it's because we're on the blinking cursor. Watch what happens to that toolbar when we click on the bird. I clicked on the bird and that toolbar has disappeared and it's been replaced with one that pertains to the bird. So these are wrap options. We have three wrap options here. Uh, justification options. Uh, there's borders. If we want to put a border on our bird, we can put a border around it. Now, some people have phoned our help desk complaining, saying that this program doesn't have any fonts. And usually it's because they're on an object that doesn't support fonts. So it doesn't make sense to change this bird object into bold italic underline. In order to get back to fonts, we have to click in an area of the program that supports fonts. So we're back to the blinking cursor and here we see that our toolbar has changed back to a font toolbar. If I click on the bird, the toolbar changes again to go to a object, like a picture object editing toolbar. Now on here there's three wrap options. What wrap means is how the text will wrap above and below or on the sides of the picture. Now, just because there's only three in the toolbar doesn't mean that there aren't more options. And to get the more options, you right-click on the object that you're working on. And we're going to go to Picture with three dots. And there's a Wrap tab here. And we see, even though there was only three wrap options in the toolbar, here we have six wrap options. Plus, the pictures are a lot bigger to look at. So we have none, which means the text will go above and below but not on the sides, before, after, parallel, and so forth. So uh, the other one is contour, which means if I click this, it would actually follow the edge of the picture uh, very close and tight. I'll turn that off. So uh, the main point, though, isn't about wrap. The main point is that on your toolbar, you have a few options, but if you need more options, you just right-click and go to the properties of the object you're on. So I'll show you that again. Right-click, and there, there's a wrap option there, but we can also go to Picture and find the Wrap tab. And they can't possibly fit all these options on the toolbar, so they just put the most frequently used ones up here. Um, the next along, we'll, uh, we looked at this Gallery button, which is called Clip Art in Word. Let's look at the drawing button. It says show draw functions. It's a picture of pencil that almost looks like a saxophone. So we clicked on that and the toolbar appears at the bottom. 
it says call out, so I'm going to click on a call out. And you get a little cross here, so I can click and drag my mouse across slowly, and it creates a bubble. A call out bubble. I can click on this little yellow dot here and bring it around to the bird's beak. Now this is a different object. You see it's selected with these little four handles around it. And up here, it has a different toolbar again. It's different than the ones we saw before. Uh, it has blue 8, which is the fill color right now. I can choose yellow. If you don't know what it's for, again, just hover your mouse over it. It says area style filling. Now say I want to put some text in here. I can double click inside there. And my toolbar has changed again to a text editor, and I have a blinking cursor. So now I filled that in. I click down below and my cursor is back up here. The toolbar is back to your main font toolbar. Um, the next thing I'll show you is how there are little black drop down arrows that show hidden characters. So I've clicked on one of those black drop down arrows and I'm going to choose a scroll. You see there's a bunch of hidden shapes in behind. So I'll click and drag and draw a scroll. Now this one also has a yellow dot, and this yellow dot changes the size of the roll. So every object has different properties to it that behave slightly different. I'm going to double click inside there. My toolbar is changed again to a text editing toolbar. I'm going to center the text. And this is my life story. There we go. So I filled in my life story in the box there. The next is, what we'll look at is printing. Let's go to File and Print at the bottom. So right now it defaults to the Toshiba. In the schools it defaults to the closest printer um, to where you're sitting, or you can ask us and we'll change your default printer. When you're in the lab it'll print to the lab. When you're in your classroom it often prints to the Toshiba, which is the big photocopier in the office. At this school here, we have options for library office. There's the printer in a library. There's a printer in room 5, which is most likely the lab, the computer lab. Um, I have access to the secretary's printer. Uh, you guys probably don't. Now, the Toshiba's photocopier, that's the big uh, Xerox machine, it often is loaded up with different size paper. So, say during report card time you want to print on legal paper, you just choose the legal uh, Toshiba paper size there. You also have the option of clicking on properties, and if you wanted um, double-sided printing, you can um, print uh, double-sided here. Uh, there's also options to do stapling and hole punching. I'm going to cancel out of printing. Let's look at um, <coughs> the page format. Let's go to format and page. Now, normally when you start it up, you have to actually click on the page tab here for the first time. And um, this is one other thing that's a little bit different between Word and this program is um, where this page is located. And this is where, you, if you want to you watch over here, I click Landscape. It flips the page sideways, so Portrait or Landscape. Um, also, if you're doing hole punching, sometimes you want to bring the margin in a bit. I'll just make it back to portrait. Now you see this margin slightly bigger. I'll make it bigger still. So you can put some hole punches on. The opposite is if you were doing a poster and you want to adjust your margin out to fit more on the page. So um, you can also set the, the page size if you want legal or, or larger uh, size paper. Um, or you can just custom create the size there. Um, for your paper. The reason why I point this out is because when you're printing, um, people that are used to the Microsoft Office usually look under the file menu to set these options, and this is actually under the page format or the format page menu. I'm going to cancel out of here. Actually, I'm going to save it next, and we'll go to save. And I'm going to overwrite this. Actually, I'll call it my bird too. Now, if you were sending it to someone with Microsoft Word and they were too lazy to download OpenOffice, um, you can save it as a Word doc if needed. Uh, it's not necessary. You can just leave it in the schools. Uh, everyone in our district is, has OpenOffice now, so um, you can save it as an uh, open document text. And I'll just hit Save here, and we'll close the program down.